Every day I open my email and then I close it. Well, hello everyone. It's me, Christine, again. And I have a lot of unread emails. <laughs> yes. And apparently that gives a lot of you a lot of anxiety. <laughs> Let me see. 70,422. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me explain. You see, I'm just really popular. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I want to say, first of all, that I know I get a ton of emails from you guys, and I'm really sorry that I don't have the time to respond to them. I wish I did, but if I started responding to them, then I wouldn't have time to make videos at all. <laughs> and then you wouldn't be someone they want to email anyway. Exactly. I'm not emailing you back so I can make this video. <laughs> but what you may not be aware that comes to my inbox quite frequently is emails from companies who want to work with me. <laughs> oh yeah, they're just flooding in. Let's slide into my inbox. <laughs> I want to share today. Yeah, share. Spill the tea. Yes. Why are you clapping? That's what people do <laughs> these days. <laughs> all right, so Who's ready to spill some tea? I'm just gonna like blur out all the names and stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Because I still want to be respectful and not get sued. Well, feel good if we actually delete some of these emails. Isn't there a limit on how big your inbox can be? I test that every day. <laughs> Alright, let's dive right in. Make your audience happy! <laughs> Gift box emojis. Hello Christine, we are contacting you because we would like to know your rates to promote our brand through a story on Instagram or Snapchat. Our shop offers accessories for men and women and we would like to offer your audience an exceptional discount. Uh, what are you selling? <laughs> accessories for men and women. You know what? My followers love accessories for men and women. I'm just gonna <laughs> jump right on this and make them happy. It's very clearly like a mass email. But wait, there's more. Uh oh. Hi. Wrong way to start an email. Have you thought of building your audience and revenue outside YouTube? I like how it's from a company that has made a logo that looks like suspiciously like similar to, to Google's Google? logo. Oh, the money emojis in the subject line. That means I'm gonna click it. <laughs> we did some collaboration with other influencers such as Brennan and Adam Sally. Well, the second guy got kicked off a plane and pretended it was because they were racist when really he was causing a disturbance. Oh, uh, okay. And they're saying like, <laughs> decline. <laughs> Collaboration. Just came across your Instagram profile and we got charmed by the personality that you reflect through it. <laughs> hey, could you promote us to your millions of followers? You could have a pair of earrings we made. Maybe this is something that we need to explain though. I think most people have an appreciation now when they see articles about the fact that YouTubers and people on Instagram with significant followings can make pretty significant amounts of money from single posts. So when you get an email from someone saying, hey, can you promote our product? I'll send you that product. It's not really unless reasonable it's, or Unless it's a Tesla, then. <laughs> It's just not a fair trade, you know? The values just don't line up. <laughs> These companies aren't just giving influencers products because they want to be nice to them, because they like them. It's because they want to make money. Let's be clear. They're giving influencers that at the hopes that the influencer will promote it and then the business will in turn make hopefully thousands and thousands of dollars. That's what they look at influencers as, money making tools pretty much. It would be easy to think that we're just sounding bratty because we're saying mm -hmm. like, oh, we're they saying... expect us to promote it for a free product. But you have to recognize that there are a lot of companies out there who pay serious amounts of money for exposure on because YouTube. Because it's, it's advertising. Just keeping it real. <laughs> I'm not saying like these people should offer me tens of thousands because I'd still say no. <laughs> A new partnership this year? I saw your Insta feed and I sense good vibes from you. <laughs> you mustn't have been on my Instagram. <laughs> oh, this business inquiry is fire, Ben. <laughs> We're huge fans of your motivational and inspirational content you post on your Instagram. It's very aligned with our products and message. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Do people respond to these? I, I think maybe like smaller influencers, when these are the first types of emails they're getting, they would respond. Because I definitely responded to emails like this in the beginning. <laughs> I eventually realized that they were all just kind of trying to play you and not pay you. And they were selling crap. And I didn't want to sell my followers crap, but it took me some time and experience of like getting these in the beginning to really realize like, what's going, what's on, going here? on here? Christine with an H. 
<laughs> delete. <laughs> I hope you're having a great start to the week. Thanks, I am. <laughs> this is a weird thing you see sometimes though, like, hey, can you promote our thing to your audience? We'll give a bunch of our shitty free product to a few people in your audience. It's but like, we will gain a whole bunch of sales from you. Didn't some YouTubers recently get in trouble with like free makeup brushes they were promoting that like people just never got? Yeah, people were alleging that was a scam in the end. I'm pretty sure I've been reached out to by those brands too. <laughs> But here's the thing, like, if some big YouTubers are working with companies like this that are very clearly not engaged in the best business practices, if I'm a female YouTuber who does story times and talks about how honest I am, get these free makeup brushes, and then your audience maybe trusts you and tries to buy them, and then they get scammed by a company, why would you ever watch that YouTuber respectfully of ever again? Hate watch? <laughs> Breast pumps, high quality hemp oil, handheld garment steamer, or turntable. Would you like to recommend the robot vacuum cleaner? <laughs> we think they're the perfect fit for your platform. <laughs> That's another theme of emails I get a lot of. Products that have absolutely nothing to do with me or my brand. <laughs> Glad to hear that you're on the market for rubber products. What does that mean? I don't know, but they would give me free samples on my request. <laughs> Hi, Christine. I'm reaching out on behalf of Defy Media. Wait, are we saying this company name? Oh, yeah. Oh. I don't, I don't <laughs> mind mentioning me. I remember I spoke to this person. They had reached out asking if you'd be interested in uh, working with Defy Media at the time. Defy Media is basically an MCN. It's now gone bankrupt and they declared bankruptcy while they were holding a bunch of the AdSense earnings of many of the channels in their roster. If you want more information about that, go watch uh, Matt Pat's video. Or Phil DeFranco's. But yeah, essentially at the time, they reached out wanting to know if they could run ads on your channel. They were offering a pretty attractive deal, but we said we would never consider doing something that would give up the monetization of your channel. I feel bad for people who all of a sudden were thrown into a pretty terrible situation with this company. At the same time, you entered into a business deal with them because you thought they could get you more money. They signed over the rights to own monetization. monetization. Whereas I'm an independent. <laughs> so no one controls my ads but Susan. Thank you, Susan, <laughs> for keeping this video monetized. So in retrospect, that was a good decision. Good intuition. <laughs> See, this is why I say no to everyone because you never know the risks. <laughs> Oh, this is my favorite one. Oh, I remember. This is from a long time ago, but I still remember it. <laughs> Hello, Christine. They know me. They watch me. <laughs> Points. I'm the influencer marketing specialist for <laughs> One of the largest online retailers for diamonds and engagement rings. I wanted to reach out to discuss partnership opportunities tying in your boyfriend, Ben, as well. <laughs> what could it be? Really? <laughs> Obviously, <clears throat> this is a delicate subject. And each couple approaches it in a different way. <laughs> oh yeah. Sounds like they've done this before. <laughs> Some couples monetize it. Depending on where you are in your journey as a couple, <laughs> we'd love to be there for that special moment in your lives <laughs> to help you find the perfect ring. Just like The Bachelor. <laughs> if now is not the right time, I'd be happy to reach out later. <laughs> We'd love to be involved in that moment with you and create some fantastic content documenting the process. <laughs> so, basically, a company wanted to sponsor Ben proposing to me. <laughs> so presumably they were gonna give us a ring. And then you would say, will you marry me? Sponsored by... Find the ring for your future fiancé at the link down below in the video description box. I feel like we should have said yes, and, just and gotten a ring. Them. And yes. then sold it? And just make some bullshit video. I guess a lot of people would be happy to receive a yeah. free engagement. Let's not forget that. Like, we're not trying to sound ungrateful. I'm very grateful for the sometimes very large value items that companies want to give me. This was just very funny to us because we know we're not interested in marriage. <laughs> yeah. And B, even if I was, I do not <laughs> want my engagement to be sponsored on the internet. All of that is just weird to me. I mean, you're probably not the only person who's received an email like this. I wonder how many people have done sponsored engagements. Oh, I've seen them. Are they out there? Mm-hmm. 
if marriage means something to you, it's kind of turning that special moment for you into a product for consumption, you know? I want to see like a baby sponsored by a company. Like if there's a couple out there that are thinking maybe having a baby. This baby brought to you by Toys R Us. Do you want to have a baby? Well now you can with Johnson & Johnson's. Click the link down below to get started. Okay, Ben, so um, did you reply to this email? I don't think we replied. Did not reply. Oh, this one's fun. Hi, Christine. I'm reaching out because we would be interested in working with you for a marketing initiative with national leader in vision correction procedures. <laughs> we are currently looking to partner with influential YouTubers who would like to undergo laser vision correction. <laughs> I, I don't wear glasses, so we could offer the surgery to your boyfriend, Ben, if he's interested in it and he could make a video of his experience using your channel. What's your fee, Ben? How do you wear these? Yeah, I, I, think you, I think you'd be a good candidate for laser eye surgery. Even if you were interested, that would still be like a weird thing to film and you'd have to make it a positive video because it's a sponsorship. And what if like you went blind? <laughs> Like, then what? So as we were going through emails trying to find some interesting ones to read, sometimes you find these threads where someone will just have sent 28 unanswered emails <laughs> just yeah. asking if you're interested. And they get weird sometimes where like the seventh email where like clearly you're not interested, you're not responding. They say things like final chance. Final <laughs> chance. Are you sure you want to miss this opportunity? <laughs> okay. Memes. I like this. When companies send me memes. Because oh yeah, it's so then professional. It, then at least I get a laugh out of it. A reply for an Oscar is simply an illogical. I don't, actually I don't even understand that meme. What does that mean? Don't put memes in business emails. Unless they're good. <laughs> Partnership opportunity, get 5k up front! Dear Christine, spelt wrong. We will pay you $5,000 up front. We will make your merchandise web store, create your designs, print, pack, and ship, and give your audience the best customer service. All you have to do is promote our store and merch on your social media channels. This is a great deal, let's make it happen. You know the craziest thing about this? Like, they are assuming that you don't give a shit about what merchandise they're selling on your behalf. I would want to know more information about what kind of merchandise they can make. Is it good quality? Do you have examples? Is there anything I can see? What merchandise are we even talking right. about? The reality is these emails that have no real substance and information about what they're going to do for you are usually just people trying to take advantage of you and your potential for making money. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> Here's one you tweeted about recently. Oh, this one's good. I'm sending you this email on behalf of the creator and founder of <laughs> a new dating application to be launched very soon. So in the email, it says that it's a dating application, but in the attached press kit, it actually makes it clear that it's an escort service. Simply choose the ones you desire and don't let your bid be topped. In case of dissatisfaction, contact customer service for a refund. <laughs> and we're not making any judgment about people who work in the industry. The only reason why I'm laughing at this is because why would they ask me to... <laughs> I mean... You have published research on prostitution laws. You think they know that? No. <laughs> Next. Hi, Sophia. We are an <laughs> eyelash extensions brand, and we would love to collaborate with you to promote our brand. <laughs> Something I love more than anything is when I get emails that were not intended for me. <laughs> hey, Sophia. Um, a company wants you to wear their eyelashes. <laughs> Alright, next. Hello, dear. How do you do? I am quite impressed by your great artwork. We are an online website of feminine bathing suits. It is favored by our customers and we would love to share more and more of our beautiful and high quality low price swimsuits. Are you willing to attempt the suits and be the spokeswomen for us? Doing a bathing suit promotion w would be the most off-brand thing ever. <laughs> It's like the opposite of what I wear. Could you wear the swimsuit over your sweatpants? You think that would sell? <laughs> hey Christine, do you want to join our app so you can sell your time to interact with fans? Is that what they actually wrote? No. Oh. 
gotten a few of these from a bunch of different companies with different apps that basically allow fans to pay to have a video call with you or receive a personalized video message. I can understand why fans would want the opportunity to purchase those like for their friend's birthday or I get emails from parents asking if they can buy a video message from me and I get it and like I might have done that too with the Backstreet Boys when I was here. <laughs> but on the other side, I just, as a human, don't feel that comfortable with selling my time to the people who, who, lo who love me. Does that sound weird? Like, I'm happy to go to VidCon and do meet and greets and those are all not paid. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I mean, like, they pay for my flight, I guess, but I'm not getting money from the individual that I am just spending a couple seconds on, you know? Yeah. Selling merch and actual products is different because you're purchasing an object. There is an exchange there. But if you're just purchasing a hello from me, personally, I feel uncomfortable with that. Like, I don't want to charge you guys for a hello. <laughs> it's, it's just not my thing. I don't think we'd want access to you being dependent on fans having money and being willing to pay more money or to bidding come on to you. me. Like if you spend two hundred dollars, I'll talk to you for forty-five seconds. Mm -hmm. The idea of your fans with more money being able to pay for direct access. Yeah. Something about that just doesn't sit right. I would feel dirty taking your money just to like say hi. In general, I think we're just both not really greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Not just that. I don't think like subscription models or pay for content models work for you. I just want the advertiser's money. I don't <laughs> want your money. And we should acknowledge that you've done very well just from getting just ad revenue ads. on the platform. And you have another career to fall back on when YouTube doesn't work, right. which is not true Good of point. a lot of people yeah. who are more reliant on their YouTube income. So I completely understand why some YouTubers are choosing some of these subscription or paid messaging models, building up their business so that if YouTube does fall, <laughs> then they have that also. They're cushioning themselves. Some way more cushy than others, but l <laughs> let's not name names. So I'm getting a little greedy out there, YouTubers. Hey, they gotta save up for retirement now. Because <laughs> they might be forced into retirement next year. <laughs> we could go through my, you know, 77,000 other emails and sit here for the next seven weeks. But uh, I think we're gonna end it here. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch my content for free, bitch! <laughs> I hope this gives you guys a sense of not only how many emails I get and uh, apologize Apologies and hope you understand why I don't reply. If you're a brand who doesn't know how to spell my name or has no idea what I do, please lose my email. <laughs> and if you're a subscriber who actually knows what I do on this channel, then the best way to get in touch with me would probably be Twitter because to be honest, Twitter is just where I have the smallest following. So, so it's <laughs> the highest likelihood of me seeing what you tweet to me. And I like your tweet free of charge. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for spilling the tea with us. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all later. Bye.